His Dad's Army. We present Arthur Lowe, John LaMeshra and Five Dunn in Dad's Army. Big Guns, featuring John Laurie, Arnold Ridley, and Ian Lavender, with this week's guests, Larry Martin and Julian Orchard. <laughs> Here is the news, and this is John Snag reading it. Hitler continues to unleash the dogs of war. From the frozen wastes of Russia to the burning sands of the Western Desert, the ravening hounds of Nazism pillage and terrorize. But down at Warmington-on-Sea, it is a pleasant spring morning in 1942, and the Pickford's van has just brought a surprise delivery to the headquarters of the local home guard. Here. Is your name Mannerin? It is. Well, sign this chitty and I'll be on my way. What does it say, Wilson? Mr. Mayor, sir, uh, uh, <laughs> a note from you, a call from us. A date is fixed. No worry or fuss. A Pickford van, a gentle giant. The work is done. A satisfied client. <laughs> oh, no time for poetry. What, what, what's all this about? Look, just sign it. I can't hang about. We've got six more to deliver today. What exactly is it you want me to sign for? Blimey, can't you read? It's got it on the chitty. One thirteen-pounder and two cases of ammunition. What did you say? Mr. Manry, there's a huge firing piece out in the yard. <laughs> yeah, it's a really great gun. What? I better go and have a look. Look, will somebody sign this chitty? Yes, of course, yes. Have you got a pen? Yeah. Thank you, first. There you are. There's your chitty. <coughs> I beg your pardon? My pen, please. What? what? Oh, tell me. Yes, there you are. <laughs> sorry, sorry. That's all right, mate. That's how I got it. <laughs> Wilson, come and look at this gun. I'm coming, sir. Well, what do you think of it? I say, it's rather big, isn't it? <laughs> Hitler comes now and blasts him right into kingdom come. <laughs> How's it work, do I have the foggiest notion. Have you ever handled one of these, Josie? No, Mr. Wilson. We used to use the Gatsin when we were in the Sudan. <laughs> <laughs> we turned a handle. It was invented by an American dentist named Mr. Gatsin. And in the Sudan, we used to form up in a square with a gun in the middle. And when them whirling dervishes come rushing towards us with their blood-curdling cries, we waited till the last minute. And then we used to bob down. And then the blokes behind us would let them have it. Rat, tat, 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 tat. Mind you, if you didn't bob down quick enough, you used to get the top of your helmet shot off. <laughs> Hence the expression, get your head down. Really? There's a, there's a plate on the side here, so it says, uh, 13 pound and naval gun. Naval gun? Yes. Oh, we're in luck. Fraser was in the Navy. That's right, sir, yes. Uh, uh, Chief Petty Officer. Walker, get Fraser and the rest of the platoon. Yes, sir. Here, Taffy, come and see what Father Christmas bought. Well, Fraser should be able to give us the drill. Oh, yes, yes. Oh, look, there's a telescope thing there. Yes, that's right. They're, they're the sights, Josie. Oh, the sights. Yes, yes. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> oh, I can see some sights through it, all right. I can see a stack. And there's a couple of people on it, and there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Here, come and have a look, Mr. Wilson. What? Oh, yes, it is rather unusual. Look, look, there's no time for that now. <laughs> hey, look at that gun. Is it eyes, Uncle Sergeant? It would appear so, Frank, yes. Does it uh, make a very big bang? Well, let's face it, it's not exactly a pea shooter, is it, Mr. Godfrey? Yeah. <laughs> and it was giving me an awful headache. Uh, that's why I used to dread Guy Fox night, sir. Ah, <laughs> what's all the kerfuffle about, eh? Ah, Fraser. I expect you've seen one of these guns before, eh? Oh. Oh, I have that. I... Well, to us, it's a very mysterious piece of mechanism. To you, it's probably like meeting an old friend. Yeah, how do you shoot it, Mr. Fraser? Mm, well, no, I can't say I'm over familiar with this particular weapon. Surely one gun is very like another. I mean, you, you must know the principle of the thing. Oh, I do, say The principle is the same. Come on, Fraser, show us what to do. Yeah, come on, let's get cracking. Well, it's oh, just as simple as it looks, you know. However, the basic idea is that the shells go in at one end of that bottle and they come out at the other. <laughs> Steady, Jock. Don't get too technical. <laughs> You're a chief petty officer, weren't you, Fraser? How was that? Well, perhaps Fraser didn't have uh, too much to do with guns. That's right. That's right, Sergeant. What did you do? Oh, I did uh, all sorts of things. Such as? Mostly I was a cook. A cook? <laughs> a cook? And all the time I thought you were something important. Here, if you were on a ship, 
Would you not think that your food was important? But you said that you'd fought at Jutland. I did not say that. I said I was at Jutland. Sailors eat, you know, even in battle. When the shells are flying, it takes a strong man to stay below and make shepherds pie. <laughs> and an even stronger one to eat it. <laughs> I think you had to be strong to do anything with boats. I, I used to feel a little queasy, even on the serpent's eye. Well, it's a disappointment, Fraser, but uh, I'm sure we'll manage somehow. Sorry. Sorry I let you down, sir. No, 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 no. You haven't let us down, Fraser. Hey, Mr. Mannerin. Yeah? I nearly drove off and forgot. This handbook comes with a gun. I think it tells you how to make it go off. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. Ah, here we are. Thirteen pounder, quick firing, Mark five gun. Ah, all here in the handbook, Wilson. Ah, right, jolly good, sir. Mm. Good. Now, the gun crew consists of GL... SS trainer, breech worker, and two loaders. Permission to speak, sir. Yes, John. I should like to volunteer to be GL, SS trainer, breech worker, <laughs> and two loaders. Thank you, Jones. I think that's the entire gun crew. Perhaps they, uh, perhaps they explain it more fully in a later chapter. Yes, yes, I'll read on. Yes, position for close-up. Oh, we used to do that in the vicar's pantomime, sir. In the funny drill scene, close-up, we used to say, and we all lifted our clothes up. <laughs> I bet that was hilarious. Oh. It was. The vicar played the dame. He was very good, he was. Sir. Yes, I saw him. <laughs> Frightened me to death. <laughs> anyway, now let's concentrate on the matter in hand. Number one, the gun layer. Get R. Ah, GL. See? Gun layer. <laughs> Number one, the gun layer sits at the elevating wheel on the left of the gun barrel. Mr. Speaks up. Mm. I'd like to volunteer to be the GL layer on the left of the gun barrel. If, if it's a sitting job, sir, it might suit me. Yes, very well, Godfrey. Take up your position. Uh, yes, sir. Give him a hand, Morgan. Right. Oh, sit down easy, Mr. Godfrey. Oh, there you go. Oh, oh, oh thank you. <laughs> there we are. Now well, we've got him in that seat. left to stay there for the rest of the war. It all right. <laughs> <laughs> Number two, the breech worker sits on the right in line with the breech, which is that bit where the shells go in. I should like to volunteer to be the breech worker on the right in line with the breech, which is the bit where the shells go in. Yeah, oh, all right, Jones. You sit there. But shall I sit side saddle or astride? Just sit down. <laughs> now, number three. The loader. Presumably that means the man who loads the shells into the breach, wouldn't you say? Yes, well, that seems eminently logical to me, sir. Yes. <laughs> now, the loader. That can be you, Pike. Sir? Stand behind the gun layer, which is Godfrey. Right, Pike. Stand, stand behind Godfrey. Yes, Mr. Manreen. The trainer sits at the training wheel on the right of the barrel. You can be the trainer, Fraser. Aye, sir. Then there's another loader who stands behind the first loader. Walker? You stand behind Pike. Right, Mr. Mannering. SS stands at the sights. I wonder what SS means. Um, sights superintendent, you think? Yes. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. That'd better be you. All right, sir. Now, we're we all clear so far. <clears throat> this seat's not very comfortable, sir. Not meant to be comfortable, Godfrey. This is war. <laughs> now, what's next? Ah, oh, yeah. Clear away any obstructions to the working of the gun. You'd better get rid of Jones here for a start. That'll do. Well. <laughs> Next, open the breach. Right, Jones, open the breach. Yes, sir. Oh, it won't shift. Give him a hand, Pike. More yes, sir. Right. Yes, sir. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. I think it's rusted up, sir. Here, let me have a go. <coughs> no, it's no good. Excuse me, sir. Uh, perhaps I can help. <coughs> ah. <laughs> There you are, sir. You had the safety catch on, you see. <laughs> Thank you, Wilson. <laughs> Wondered how long it'd be before somebody spotted that. <laughs> now, next, the breech worker. That's you, Jones. Reports, bore clear. Right? Call out that bit about the bore, Jones. It's a bore. Yeah, no, no. no. <laughs> bore clear, bore clear. Oh, yes. Book here, book here, book here, book here, yeah, right, book... Oh, no, no. Excuse me, Mr. Manreen. Are we going to do some real firing? Of course we're not, you stupid boy. I'm just going to pretend. <laughs> now, the loader loads the shell into the gun. Right, sir. And calls. Gun loaded to the breech worker. Gun loaded to the breech worker? Uh, no. <laughs> just gun loaded, Pike. Sorry. It says the loader should take extreme caution to ensure that his fingers are out of the breach before the breach worker closes it. <laughs> so, as soon as his fingers are clear, he calls to the breach worker, the corner of the page is torn off. It's a funny thing to say. <laughs> it's 
say that. <laughs> the corner of the page with the instructions is torn off. Oh, dear. Now we'll never know what he calls, will we? How about hands away? And if he doesn't get his hands away, how about out? <laughs> Warned you once, Walker. We want something brief. Point. Well, how about fingers out? Yes. <laughs> Now, let me see. For each worker, close the breach. That's you, Jones. Shut up, sir. I beg your pardon. <laughs> shut up, sir. The breach is shut. Doesn't say anything in the instructions about your saying that? No, but it sounds rather military, doesn't it, sir? <laughs> I think it sounds rather rude. How about once more into the breach? Oh, don't be ridiculous. <laughs> now, the all of fire... The gun layer pulls his lanyard. Right, go on, Goffin. Very well, sir. Oh, ah, 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 just a minute, what are you doing? Ah, ah, in my lanyard, sir. Not the lanyard round your neck. Strangle yourself. <laughs> the lanyard on the gun. Uh, do you mean I actually make the gun go off? That's what it says here. I oh, really don't think I'm suited to the post. Please, sir, I, I start to pull the lanyard and fire the gun, sir. Let me pull it, sir. Let me pull it. You can't reach across and pull it, Jones. What about the kick? I'd like to do that as well, sir. <laughs> I'm talking about the kick of the gun, the recoil. Well, I should still like to do it. Oh, be quiet, Jim. Pike, you pull the lanyard. I'm putting the shells in. I can't do both. Don't use that tone of voice to me, boy. <laughs> sir, I'm not exactly overemployed. <laughs> so I'm obliged. Right, Wilson, you pull it. Very good, sir. Now, I think we've all grasped the basics of, of how the gun works. Pretty straightforward, so we'll have a practice. That's all very fine, sir, but what are we aiming at? Ah, quite right, Fraser. We need a target. Now, uh, now let's imagine that um, the next milk float over there on the coast road is a tank. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. 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 Right. Good, well, aim at that. And... Uh, I'll stand over here. <laughs> work out the range and the angle of fire. Hey, hey, hold on. It's called inclination, not angle of fire. Oh, is it? Thank you, Fraser. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> well, I should say the range is uh, 700 yards and the uh, inclination, four degrees. Godfrey? Uh, yes, sir. Have you got the inclination? <laughs> <laughs> a few minutes longer. <laughs> thank, you, thank you very much for asking, sir. No, no, no. No, no. No, exactly. no, no, my dear fellow. No, no, no. Turn your little handle to that little... <laughs> that little dial there says four degrees. <laughs> oh, I see. Now, follow the target in your sights, Wilson. All right, sir. Move the gun barrel to the left. Keep moving to the left. More. Fire the target. On target now, sir. Good. Fire when I give the command. There you go, sir. I won't give the command just now if I was you, sir. Why not, Jones? Because the barrel's pointed right at your head. <laughs> Come in. Evening, Captain Manning, even Sergeant Wilson. <coughs> Jones. Oh, yeah, Joseph. Excuse me, Mr. Manning, mm. but I'll be having the toot here in your office. Yes, I think so, Jones. Good, because I've got some sand for the toot, and Walker's got some tins. Joe, bring your toot tins in. Right, come in. Excuse me, sir. I hate to appear stupid about this, but uh, what on earth is a toot? Oh, really, Wilson? Let's see you're not knowing what a toot is. Well, I, I wasn't here last night when you fixed it up. Toot stands for technical exercise without troops. Oh, does it? I see, yes, yes. <laughs> now, we're going to make a, a, a model of Warmington. Yeah. Now that we have a 13-pounder, our fighting potential is enormously increased. Oh, yes, enormously, yes, of course. <laughs> if we ever learn to fire it properly. <laughs> we must now conceive our whole form of tactics on a very much larger scale. So, when we've built this model, we can see where best to sight our gun to give us maximum firepower. Hey, Mr. Mannering, here's some tins for your uh, shoot. Why are they so dented? Oh, well, you see, Mr. Mannering, they get like that when they uh, fall off the back of a lorry. <laughs> I see. Now, we need uh, something to put the toot on. Bring that blackout screen over and put it on my desk, Walker. Right you are, Mr. Mannering. 
I've got a toy gun here to represent our naval gun. Oh, good. Now we've got something to shoot for the toot. <laughs> Where's your black ball screen, Mr. Mannery? Thank you, Walker. Right, Jones, spread your sand over the screen. Very good, sir. Here we are, sir. I'll just smooth it out. Hello? What's this bit of suet doing here? <laughs> that boy Raymond's getting very careless. I can't use it now. It's covered in sand. <laughs> Never mind. It can go in the sausages. <laughs> Wilson, make a note, will you? No sausages this week. <laughs> sir. Even, sir. Fraser? I brought as much stuff as I could, sir. Good. And I, I brought a few things that might help, sir. Well done, Godfrey. I've got the sand nice and smooth now, Mr. Manrin. Thank you, Jones. Now, first of all, we'll lay out the high street. Put out the spam tins, walk up, in a line down the middle. Right, sir. Evening, Mr. Manrin. Evening, Pike. I brought a lot of things for the twit. Toot, boy, toot. <laughs> Bless you. <laughs> now, we need something to represent the church. Hi. How about this, sir? Hmm? Whiskey bottle. <laughs> it's hardly suitable, Fraser. It is empty, sir. Have you got something a little more reverent? Only the ten of fruit salts. Well, that'll do. Good. <laughs> there we are. Now, something for the bandstand. How about this little powder puff, sir? Thank you, Jonathan. Don't get it dirty, will you? It's not mine. I'm very relieved to hear it. <coughs> now, the allotments. Well, that's uh, louvre do. Excellent. The gas works. How about this tin of bicarbonate? Very impressive. <laughs> now, um, Pike, have you got the tin soldiers? Yes, Miss Manning, here they are. Now, oh, let's see. This knight in armour will be you, Jones. Oh, thank you, sir. This Highland soldier is you, Fraser. Yes, <laughs> thank you, sir. Ah, two beef eaters, Walker and Godfrey. And this horseman is you, Pike. It hasn't got a head. <laughs> That's all right. You can be the head of this horseman. <laughs> but why should I be the one without an head? They're my soldiers. You'll do as you're told, Pike. <laughs> it's not fair. It's not fair. Now, let me see. We've got a cowboy and an Indian left. I shall be the cowboy. You, Wilson, will be the Indian. Yes. I rather thought I might be. <laughs> I pay attention. <clears throat> now, looking at this model of Warmington in relation to our new gun, represented by this toy one, you will see that we command this whole stretch of the coast from the Novelty Rock Emporium in the east to Stone's Amusement Arcade in the west. However, as you'll observe, there are certain obstacles in our way. For instance, this, this, uh, this, this, this powder puff, I mean, this bandstand. <laughs> have to go. Mr. Speaker, sir. Yes, John. You can't remove the bandstand, Mr. Manning. I'm the first cornet. That makes no difference to you. <laughs> there won't be any more concerts there until after the war, anyway. I know, sir, but I'd like to have something to play when the war's over. The way the war's going at the moment, the only instrument you'll be playing when it's over is the harp. Quite. <laughs> the point is that the bandstand must come down. Not only is it in direct line of fire, there's nothing to stop the enemy using it as cover for one of their invasion barges. That's just the sort of shabby trick the Nazis would use. <laughs> anyway, I wrote to the town clerk yesterday telling him that it's got to come down in 48 hours. Isn't that a bit high-handed, sir? No, not at all. Believe me, I, I know these local officials. <laughs> the only sort of language they understand. In fact, I'm fully expecting a visit from the town clerk any day now. But they'll never be able to get it down in 48 hours. I mean, it, it, it's made of solid iron. Is it? Mm. Well, I'll take it down for nothing, Mr. Mannery. <laughs> just so long as I can keep the iron for scrap, you know. I think we'd better leave this in official hands, Walker. Now, the next thing that is in line of fire is the cricket pitch. The scoreboard will have to come down. Oh, no, no, sir, please, please, please. <laughs> Not the scoreboard. <laughs> Sorry, Wilson. I know you're captain of the cricket team, but uh, can't make any exceptions. Well, it couldn't be possible to leave it until the cricket season's over. Unfortunately, the Nazis don't play cricket, Wilson. <laughs> if they did, we'd never have gone to war with them in the first place. <laughs> Anyway, in the event of the balloon going up, this will be our new plan of action. Now, have we got something to, uh, to represent Jones's van? Yeah, there's this toy car, sir. Ah, yes. Right, you jump into your van, Jones, and drive quickly down the high street. Very good, sir. What are you doing? I'm driving my van, sir. No, no, I, th I think we'll do it without the sound effects. Right, Don't mind. Fraser, you're outside your shop. Aye, sir. Jones, you pick up Fraser. Yes, sir. Then pick up Walker and proceed along Eastgate Road 
to the church hall. He can't do that, Mr. Mannering. Why not? It's a one-way street. Not in an emergency, Walker. <laughs> Meanwhile, Wilson and I run from the bank <clears throat> to the church hall. Come on, Wilson, move your Indian. What? Oh, oh yes. yes. <laughs> what about me, sir? Uh, don't I get a lift of the van? Ah, <clears throat> well... As we can never be sure where you'll be at any one time, Godfrey. <laughs> You'd better make your own way to the hall. You can be a sort of relief column. <laughs> well, thank you, sir. Now, let us assume that enemy invasion barges are trying to land troops. We are manning our gun and keeping up a constant withering fire, pounding the beaches. They're also dropping parachute troops, so Corporal Jones will take a detachment of men in his van to deal with them. Let's just try that. I'll fire the gun and you move the car, Joan. You ready? Yes, sir. Yes, all ready. Fire! All right, Jones. Off you go. Yes, sir. Nim, 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 nim,
so am I. Ooh, don't worry. Once they've settled down, the whole thing will move like a smooth, well-oiled machine. The gun will pour forth its deadly fire. Deadly? Who to? I'll soon show you. <laughs> Stand by, men. Now, remember, when I call action, I want you to go right through the drill, up to and including loading the shell. But we shall only mime the actual firing. I'm very relieved to hear it. <laughs> Are we ready? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, yes, yes. Enemy tank. Right. Range 500 yards. Action. Here you are, Parky. Got a shell for you. Shove it up the spout. Right, Joe. <laughs> oh, no. Drop it. In. Pick it up, boy. Pick it up. Oh, here you are, Mr. Jones. Here. Boy, mind where you're putting that shell, Parky. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Shell loaded, sir. Good. Enemy tank right. Range, 500 yards. Oh, still 500 yards. It's not moving, then. <laughs> <laughs> Range, 450 yards. Inclination, 6 degrees. Godfrey, 6 degrees. Wilson? Yes, sir? Godfrey got the inclination. <laughs> Godfrey, did you hear what Mr. Manning said? 6 degrees in your little wheel there. Uh, oh, yes, yes. There we are, uh, 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 six degrees. Right. Are you holding the firing lanyard? Wilson? Yes, sir. Yes, yes, yes. Now, whatever you do, don't pull it. No, 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 sir. No, no. I'll, I'll just mine it. Any <laughs> tank? <laughs> 400 yards. Pow! Yes, you! God, it's gone off! Oh, 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 look at that! Wilson, I told you not to pull the lanyard. I'm terribly sorry, sir, but if I startle me, it just sort of happened. Just look what you've done to our bandstand, man. <laughs> completely demolished. <laughs> Whatever are we going to do? I'll tell you what, Mr. Mannering. I'll clear it out for you and we'll split the profit, eh? Three ways. How, How dare, dare you? you. That episode of Dad's Army, based on the original television series by Jimmy Perry and David Croft, you heard Arthur Lowe as Captain Mannering, John LeMessure, Sergeant Wilson, Clive Dunn, Corporal Jones, John Lally, Private Fraser, Arnold Ridley, Private Godfrey, Ian Lavender, Private Pike, Larry Martin, Private Walker, Julian Orchard as Mr. Upton, the town clerk, and Michael Middleton as the Pickford's man. Big Guns was adapted for radio by Michael Knowles and Harold Snow and produced by John Dias. <laughs> So that was Dad's Army and the Big Guns, first broadcast in May 1976. It's 8.28. This is the BBC Seven Breakfast Show. Uh, I'm Richard Baker. And time for another winner. And this is exciting in my, in, from, from my little email competition called I Didn't Know Whether to Laugh or Cry, So I Laughed. And uh, thank you to Will Bates in Norwich. You're about to win a prize. Uh, this, by the way, this is the feature where people email in uh, stories of when they've laughed at deeply inappropriate moments. And this is what Will says. Uh, Dear Richard, I was round my parents' house one Sunday for dinner. My uncle had recently had a heart attack, so my dad suggested I ring him to send my best wishes. Of course, that's uh, perfectly sensible. Uh, this I proceeded to do. Unfortunately, I got the answer machine. Now, I'm not great on the phone generally, and I'm terrible with answer machines, and even worse when people are listening in on my phone calls. I never know what to say, and I start to panic and ramble on incoherently for ages. On this occasion, after the tone, <laughs> I just blurted out, You've had a heart attack! Instantly, I realised this sounded wrong, and my girlfriend and my mum started to laugh, which also set me off laughing, so I slammed down the phone. Now, uh, luckily... Uh, Will goes on to say, I'm pretty close to my uncle, so he did not conclude that I found the whole affair funny, but my dad was uh, really unimpressed that I left this message for his brother. Uh, anyway, my uncle's now recovered and is enjoying good health. Uh, Will, uh, thank you very much. And here is some good news. Your, your uncle's earlier poor health uh, has actually now seen you rewarded with, and, and this is your prize, a BBC Seven T-shirt and a DVD. Uh, let me stress this, though, listeners. I am not suggesting that ill health or laughing at people recovering from a heart attack will help you win a radio competition. Get that out of your mind. Classic comedy at breakfast. 
with Richard Vick on BBC Seven. Persuasion. You cannot throw yourself away on a young man who has the most uncertain profession. Mansfield Park. You have now shown me that you could be wolfy and perverse, that you think only of yourself. And sense and sensibility. I have never spent a pleasanter morning in my life. The pleasantness of an employment does not always evince its propriety. Three classic dramas from Jane Austen. Have I surprised you? Weekdays at 9 in the morning, 8 in the evening, and again at 1 a.m. Here on BBC Seven. Uh, this weekend on BBC Seven, I think this sounds like good news. Nick Hancock hosts a special two-part comic relief controller. Uh, this is where he reveals the top six radio comedy favourites as voted for by you. Uh, expect drama, expect surprises, expect controversy. You know, not too much. After all, it's it's only radio comedy. Nothing too contentious, to be fair. But uh, it, it's BBC Seven's Comic Relief Controller with Nick Hancock this Saturday and Sunday at 1 p.m. on BBC Seven. Uh, now, though, at breakfast, time for more Sony award-winning comedy. Uh, this is Goodness Gracious Me. Hello, Puttara. What are you doing? Oh, hi, Dad. Hi, Mum. I'm filling out my A-level option list. We've got to choose by tomorrow. Oh, my little boy is all grown up. <laughs> yes, the responsibility of adulthood comes to all of us. Well, you know what your father and I want for you? Yeah, I, I know, but I've been thinking about that. Look, I know it means a lot to you, and it's what you want, but it's not what I want. You mean... Yes, I... I don't want to be a pop star. No. I want to be a doctor. Oh, God. How can you do this to us? Are you trying to murder us? Look, Peter, it's just right for an Indian boy to be a doctor these days. That's right. Haven't you heard? Asians are cool. Brown is the new black. <laughs> Doctors are square, better. Also accountants, lawyers, tobacconists. I, I like medicine.